Good evening, this is Tony Trunowski, manager of the Practical Investor LLC. Today is September the 17th, 2009, and the topic for the day is gaps, resistance, and Fibonacci's. This video is meant for instruction and entertainment purposes only. This is not a solicitation to buy or sell any security. A purchase or a sale of a security may result in a loss of principal. Please consult with an expert advisor who may explain the risk of any investment you may consider. You cannot invest directly in an index. Well, good evening, and we've got a full agenda tonight, so let's just get started with uh, the charts and the explanation of what's going on behind the scenes. Uh, today was a pretty uh, filled day with events, and so let's just start with event number one, which is a gap that was filled in the S&P 500 Spider, the SPY. Today, uh, that gap was left open almost a year ago. The close on the uh, SPY on October the 3rd, a Friday, 2008, was 108.02. The open on October the 6th, a Monday, was 105.53. Uh, it hit a high of 105.98, but basically left a three-point gap open. That's a pretty monstrous gap to leave open for almost an entire year. Well, as the saying goes, gaps are meant to be closed. And uh, uh, I keep on hearing the uh, London subway uh, announcement, mind the gap, mind the gap. And this is the one the uh, spider has minded the gap today and filled it. It actually, uh, remember the close was 108.02. It actually went today and uh, topped out at 108.06. So the gap was neatly filled. Uh, one of the things that I just want to mention is the 50% retracement uh, on the Fibonacci's is just directly overhead at 109.27. Uh, the spider does not have to f uh, complete uh, the Fibonacci retracement, but one of the things is that uh, since it's so close, let's give it another day and find out. As we go to the Standard & Poor's Index, uh, we have a gap, uh, but it's a very, very small one, and it's at 1,098. So on October the 3rd, um, the low for that day was 1,098.14. On October the 6th, um, it uh, actually opened at a thousand, and the high for the day, by the way, was 1,097.56. So um, we had a very small, uh, about a 60 basis point gap left open. I've got the red arrow there, and we're not quite there yet. Uh, there's about uh, roughly, uh, oh, give it uh, about 30 points, 33 points to go from today's high if it wants to do that. Um, does it have to do that? Well, you be the judge. Uh, there's also a 50% retracement directly overhead. Uh, I really can't tell with any authority uh, that it's going to make either of those, but uh, it's an interesting point. The, the gap's got me going, you might say. And uh, I just wanted to follow up on this and find out what's there. Now, what's interesting is the NASDAQ 100 also filled a gap, but that was way back at the June high. Uh, its gap uh, was right around uh, 1,500. And you can see the same date, October the 3rd. Uh, it uh, closed at a certain level, and then October the 6th, it reopened just a slight amount lower. Uh, that gap was filled back in June. In fact, a few other technicians had mentioned it. And uh, since it had filled the gap and had filled the 38.2% Fibonacci retracement, um, a lot of people thought the market rally was over. Now, the point that I want to make here is that ain't necessarily so. Uh, as you can see what happened, uh, it was over for the time being until um, early July. Uh, and it started to rally again into uh, the present day. Now, finally, uh, let's take a look at uh, the industrials. Uh, there is no gap. The Dow Jones industrials uh, do not leave gaps, but 
One of the interesting things is it has a high point. This is called a, a fourth of a third resistance. Uh, there are five waves down uh, in that uh, cluster of waves um, through November 21st, uh, 2008 for the Dow. Uh, although no gap was left open, uh, there was a fourth wave high. I believe that fourth wave high uh, came in uh, in early October. There was another one just below that uh, which is also part of the fourth wave, I believe, uh, and it had to be on uh, November the 4th, which was uh, the election day last year. So there were a couple of highs there, but this is also a resistance area. And uh, the reason I want to bring this up is that uh, the S&P 500 and the Dow both hit their 38.2% resistance uh, on the Fibonacci's and actually have gone slightly over. And the reason is that there are other um, points that uh, attract or repel. And in this case, we met the top of the fourth wave of the Dow, uh, the fourth of a third, rather, of the Dow from last fall. And so this could very easily be the point where we have a turn in the indexes. Now, why am I saying that? Why today? And uh, let me just uh, uh, just give you a, a little bit of a heads up here because you have uh, distance relationships in the Fibonacci's. You've got, uh, um, but you also have time relationships in the Fibonacci's. And let me just say one of the things that I've discovered earlier about a week ago or so, uh, my subscribers were getting this uh, information uh, over the last week. Uh, actually, uh, today is the 38.2% time retracement for the Dow and the Standard & Poor's. So the 17th of September, we have now reached the 38.2% time retracement. And again, if we look at the S&P 500, we've been hovering just a little bit above that for an entire month. So we hit that 38.2 distance relationship uh, way back on August the 7th. And uh, we've not made a whole lot of progress, maybe about 5% since then, um, compared to the rest of the rally. So today we hit the 38.2% time relationship. And tomorrow we hit the 78.6% uh, time relationship on the NASDAQ 100. Uh, very interesting because I measured the bottom from November the 21st last year. And uh, because the decline was uh, shorter than the other indexes, uh, this rally actually took up much more of a percentage of time. And believe it or not, go back to the calendar, do the counting if you wish. Uh, t uh, tomorrow, the 18th of September, is the 78.6% time relationship for the NASDAQ 100. So giving you all this information, I know it's a boatload, but the fact is that these are all indicate that there's a very high potential, there's a cluster of potentials for a reversal, uh, possibly as early as tomorrow. It may have even started to happen today. Uh, it's too early to tell yet. But I would be on the alert tomorrow for a reversal. Just pay attention to this because... Uh, one of the things that's happening is that we're seeing the Asian markets, especially China, leading the rest of the world markets down. Uh, China has already been in a reversal for over a month now. And so, uh, in fact, it's at the top of its wave two, starting into a third wave, which means it could uh, very easily start a contagion that crosses the globe. So if you would like to keep up on this uh, contagion business, uh, one of the offers is, even though we've got a little bit of the month of September left yet, uh, I am offering a subscription through the end of the year uh, for uh, new subscribers for the cost of the quarterly subscription of $100. You can reach me by emailing me at tonyc at thepracticalinvestor.com or you can go to the website www.thepracticalinvestor.com and on the bar across the top of the website you'll see company uh, click down under other services and you will see a brief description of the newsletter and my uh, registration with the financial authorities so um, 
please uh, feel free to uh, inquire. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, talking with a few more of you people, or at least uh, hearing with, from you on the, uh, uh, through the email. Uh, please, no phone calls during the working hours. And uh, this is going to be a very interesting weekend, I would say. Uh, I don't know where it's all leading yet, uh, but uh, uh, this cluster, uh, including time, uh, including space, including resistances, We've got a bunch of things that have all come together in the last day or two, and uh, this is going to really mean a lot to the market, I believe. So thank you very much for spending the time with me this evening. I hope this does you some good, and in the meantime, please do the right thing, and have a great evening.